Welcome to Hollywood Graveyard, where we set out to remember and celebrate the lives of those who lived to entertain us by visiting their final resting places. Today we're concluding our tour of Hillside Memorial Park, where we'll find such stars as Mo Howard, Shelley Winters, Milton Berle, and many more. Join us, won't you? For the second and last part of our tour of Hillside Memorial Park, we'll expand out to the grounds, courts, and open-air mausoleums across the cemetery. If you haven't done so already, be sure to check out part one. We'll begin right of the main entrance and office in the Acacia section. On the west side of one of the walls that reaches north is the crypt of America's first television star, Milton Berle. Like so many of his era, he began in vaudeville and radio before moving into television. His TV show, which began in 1948, dominated the airwaves and quickly became the most popular show on television. On Tuesday evening, when his show was on, fewer movie tickets were sold, and many businesses shut down for an hour so audiences wouldn't miss Burl's show. He soon became affectionately known throughout the nation as Uncle Milty and Mr. Television. I'm off to Hollywood to show them how they should portray just what you've seen on the screen. You'll get some great satisfaction from this great attraction. In addition to television, he had a successful film career, starring in films like It's a Mad, 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 Mad World. Heading to the west side of the next wall down, way up at the top, we find the crypt of Nell Carter. She was a singer and actress who made her Broadway debut in 1971. Her breakout role came in 1978's Ain't Misbehavin', a role which earned her a Tony Award and later an Emmy for the TV performance of the same production. I don't stay out late till get a go. I'm on my body just me and my radio. Hey, Miss McGavin, saving all my love for you. Starting in 1981, she starred in the sitcom Gimme a Break, for which she earned both Golden Globe and Emmy nominations. Let's head across the street and up the hill toward the mausoleum. Just east of a tree and bench is the grave of Shelley Winters. She was an actress who broke into Hollywood as a blonde bombshell in the 1940s, around the same time as her roommate, Marilyn Monroe. But it was her departure from this sex pot image in 1951's A Place in the Sun that launched her career and earned her critical acclaim. She would go on to become one of the great actresses of screen and stage, starring in films like The Diary of Anne Frank and A Patch of Blue, both of which earned her an Oscar. Where would we even find a cellar, a, a closet? Mr. Frank, you told Putty you would never forget what he did for you when you first came to Holland. You said you never would be able to repay him. If my him. husband had any obligations to you, he has paid it over and over. She can also be seen in Stanley Kubrick's Lolita. Let's head back toward the entrance and across the street to the west, to the Memorial Garden. Further west is the Court of Dedication, Next to this central sidewalk is the grave of Sorrel Book. He was an actor, best known for his role as Boss Hogg in the popular 70s and 80s TV series, The Dukes of Hazard. Boss Jefferson Davis Hogg was born on the dirt floor of a sharecropper shack. And from there, things kind of went downhill. But everybody has a talent, and Boss has a gift of graft. In a dazzling career in Hazard County, ranging from moonshine to political corruption, Boss has been chased by everything from revenueers to bloodhounds to irate husbands. Now, even if the city cops do spot his license number, it don't matter now. Because Boss changes license plates like he does his underwear. 
passing into the next courtyard west, then immediately south to the small, nearly hidden alcove of dedication, we find the crypt of Mo Howard along the far wall. Howard was a legendary actor and comedian, best known as one of the Three Stooges, a comedy troupe which began in the 20s with Ted Healy as Ted Healy and his Stooges. The team soon added Moe's brother Shemp and Larry Fine. In the 30s, Shemp was replaced by younger brother Jerome Curley Howard. Rebranded in the 30s as the Three Stooges, they now consisted of their best known lineup, Larry, Curley, and Moe. They signed with Columbia, where they made nearly 200 short films, known for their unique slapstick humor. Moe was the de facto leader of the group. <laughs> He's right, it's a ghost. It's right there. It's on the table. What? Oh, you too, eh? No, I'm going to have trouble with you. Well, let me give you a little advice. What? That. Oh. Now go on, go to sleep before I murder you. You got somnambulas? <laughs> on the wall to the left is Meyer Mickey Cohen. He was a Los Angeles-based gangster and part of the Jewish Mafia. He worked under Bugsy Siegel until Siegel's assassination in 1947, at which point Cohen became the West Coast crime boss. He ruled the Hollywood underground from the Sunset Strip, and during his tenure rubbed shoulders with Hollywood legends like Frank Sinatra, Robert Mitchum, and Jerry Lewis. Back to the main road, past the waterfall, on the right is Mount Shalom. Just next to the road is the grave of Paul Pink. While not a celebrity in the traditional sense, in 1939 Pink and his wife Betty founded a hot dog stand on La Brea and Melrose that became as legendary as many of the stars who have eaten there. Pink's Hot Dogs has been satisfying Hollywood's hunger for a good chili dog for nearly 80 years, and features Hollywood-inspired dogs like the Mulholland Drive Dog, the Martha Stewart Dog, and the Brando Dog. Continuing along this road, we reach the Court of Matriarchs on the right. Heading into the court, we take the first corridor on the right. Far on the right side, above eye level, is the crypt of Sid Charisse. Her skills as a dancer caught the attention of Hollywood in the 30s and 40s, and soon she would dance alongside many of the leading men of the era, like Fred Astaire in The Bandwagon and Gene Kelly in Singing in the Rain. Entombed with Sid is her husband, Tony Martin. He was one of the popular singers of the 40s and 50s. Perhaps his biggest hit was There's No Tomorrow, based on the Italian song O Sole Mio. There's no tomorrow when love is new. Now is forever. He had his own variety show, The Tony Martin Show, from 1954 to 1956. He can also be seen in many musical films of the era, including the Marx Brothers film, The Big Store. He died in 2012, but sadly still only has a temporary marker. Out back, to the east of the Court of Matriarchs, is the Garden of Rachel. Along the south wall is the grave of legendary special effects artist, Stan Winston. He was known for creating practical effects using robotics and puppets. He worked with James Cameron to bring the Terminator to life, with Steven Spielberg to bring Jurassic Park's dinosaurs to life, and with Tim Burton to create Edward Scissorhands' Scissorhands. He won four Academy Awards in his career. Northeast is the Garden of Rebecca. Just off the curved sidewalk is the grave of Adam Goldstein. He was a DJ and producer known as DJ AM. He collaborated with such artists as Papa Roach, Will Smith, and Travis Barker, and was a regular DJ at nightclubs throughout the nation. He survived a plane crash with Blink-182 drummer Travis Barker in 2008, only to die tragically a year later of an apparent drug overdose. Back to the Court of Matriarchs, we cross the street to the north to the Canaan section. Let's go left at the sidewalk. Almost all the way down, on the right, is the crypt of writer-director Richard Brooks. 
1967 he adapted Truman Capote's In Cold Blood for the screen. Other films include Cat on a Hot Tin Roof and Elmer Gantry, which won him an Oscar. Back again near the center of this courtyard, on the east facing wall, is the crypt of Fritz Freeling. He was a cartoonist, animator, and director for the Warner Brothers Looney Tunes and Merry Melody cartoons, and was instrumental in introducing and developing many of their beloved characters, including Porky Pig, Tweety Bird, Sylvester the Cat, and Yosemite Sam. In fact, Yosemite Sam was based on Freeling. Like fellow cartoonists Walt Disney and Al Biwerks, Freeling got his start in Kansas City before moving out to Hollywood, where he worked for many of the major animation studios, including Disney, but most notably, Warner Brothers, where he directed more cartoons than any other. His post-Warner Brothers work includes the creation of the animated opening for the 1963 film The Pink Panther. The popularity of the animation led to the creation of an animated short film, The Pink Fink, which earned Freeling an Oscar. His crypt features a lineup of dancing Looney Tunes characters. Near the middle of the wall to the right we find Jan Murray. He was a stand-up comedian, actor, and television host. He made a name for himself as a comedian on the Borscht Belt, a series of New York resorts popular with the Jewish community. He soon made his way to television, guest starring on many popular shows of the day like Milton Berle's show and The Tonight Show. He also hosted or was a guest panelist on several game shows in the 50s through the 70s, including Dollar a Second, Treasure Hunt, and The Hollywood Squares. Further along this wall, above eye level, is writer-producer Larry Gelbart. He is perhaps best remembered as the writer and creator of the popular TV series M.A.S.H. nominated for two Oscars in his career, for his screenplays for Tootsie and Oh God, and co-wrote the popular Broadway musical A Funny Thing Happened on the Way to the Forum. Rounding the corner at the end of the next wall is the crypt of Robert Sherman. With his brother Richard, Robert Sherman was one of the most prolific composers of songs for film in Hollywood history. He's most closely associated with Disney, having written songs for Mary Poppins, The Jungle Book, Winnie the Pooh, Chitty Chitty Bang Bang, and more. Their songs include Supercalifragilisticexpialidocious, Chim Chim Churi, Winnie the Pooh, It's a Small World After All, and Feed the Birds, which was reputed to have been Walt Disney's favorite song. Feed the birds, toppins a bag, toppins Toppins, toppins a bag Feed the birds, that's what she cries While overhead her birds fill the skies Continuing down this road east, we arrive at the Mount of Olives section. Several spaces in from the road, just past a tree and bench, is the grave of actor Vic Morrow, who starred for six seasons on the TV series Combat in the 1960s. The role earned him an Emmy nomination. He acted in nearly a hundred productions throughout his career, but sadly is best remembered for the manner of his death, one of the few occurrences of death on a film set. While shooting a night scene for Twilight Zone the movie, a pyrotechnic effect caused a helicopter to crash on Morrow and two child actors. All three were killed instantly. Morrow's daughter is actress Jennifer Jason Lee. Heading back around to the Valley of Remembrance section, near the middle of the cemetery, we find the grave of Sherwood Schwartz just north of the wall and a tree. Schwartz was a television writer and producer, best remembered as the creator of several popular television shows like Gilligan's Island and The Brady Bunch. He even co-wrote the theme songs for these shows. In 2008, he was inducted into the Television Hall of Fame. Till the one day when the lady met this fellow And they knew that it was 
much more than a hunt That this group must somehow form a family That's the way we all became the Brady Bunch The Brady Bunch The Brady Bunch That's the way we became the Brady Bunch Let's cross the wall to the south side to block 14. Here we find screenwriters and twin brothers Philip and Julius Epstein. They are remembered as the screenwriters of the classic film Casablanca. The screenplay won them an Oscar. They also wrote Arsenic and Old Lace. Julius is here, next to Philip. Finally we head across the street to the west to the courts of faith and truth. On the north end of this court, on the second level, we find the crypt of one of Hollywood's most legendary film composers, Jerry Goldsmith. He is perhaps best remembered today for composing the music for the Star Trek films. The theme was also used for Star Trek The Next Generation. He was incredibly versatile, able to compose in a classic style like Star Trek, or even avant-garde like Planet of the Apes. Other notable film scores include Patton, Chinatown, Total Recall, and The Omen, which won him an Oscar. And that concludes our tour. What are some of your favorite memories of the stars we visited today? Share them in the comments below, and be sure to like, share, and subscribe for more famous grave tours. Thanks for watching, we'll see you on the next one. You voted, and you decided what cemetery we'll be touring next. And that cemetery is, drum roll please Giuseppe. Mount Sinai in the Hollywood Hills. Thanks to everyone who voted. Look for it in the coming weeks.